Business Brain, the Entrepreneur's Podcast, Episode 398 for Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. to Business Brain. Welcome back to Business Brain here at businessbrain.show where we are small businessing with our business brains and really just living our charmed lives with our business brains every single week. Really, we're living them every day. We're just sharing about this every single week. Sponsors for this episode include business capital providers where you can go to bcproviders.com slash SBS to find out how you can get funded for as much as 250 k in as little as 72 hours. We will share more details about that shortly here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Uh, I want to d- warn you here, if there's a there's a fly in my studio. When I say studio, oh. I say that loosely because that's my my office, basically, because sure. I'm a business guy. So if you hear me, sw- you won't hear the fly, but you may hear me like... Uh, you know, swat around <laughs> as it buzzes around my face. So I just, just put that out there. So how are you, Dave? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you know, life's been, life's been nuts. I, I was thinking about our, our, we rescheduled for today because I was using my business brain yesterday to organize my life such that I can do the, I can lead my charmed life. And this was, yeah. uh, we normally record on Tuesdays today. We are recording on release day here on Wednesday because I went yesterday with my family to Boston to see this immersive King Tut. They call it the Beyond King Tut immersive experience or something. If and when it comes to your area, folks, highly recommended. Uh, but we did it on a Tuesday because, well, everybody else does things on the weekends and it gets really crowded. And so, yeah. it, you know, we are all at a point, every one of the four of us is at a point in our lives where we have some flexibility during the week time. Uh, and so we just kind of traded that out for, you know, maybe doing some work on a weekend or in the evening or whatever, and just carved out the time in the middle of the day yesterday to bounce down to Boston. We had lunch and did the thing and came back and we went down after rush hour and came home before rush hour and it was pretty good. So, you know, that's great. That's that flexibility we talk about all the time. That's exactly Uh it. Yeah. It's leveraging that flexibility. Um, and it, it really, it worked, it, it, it works out. We, you know, we, we all, we all can do it. And once you, once you kind of organize that around your, organize your life in that way and, and you use your business brain, figure it out. Yeah. And I, and I think that also as uh, business owners, this kind of, it's a great example of the kind of, of benefit you can actually offer to your employees is the flexibility to do things with their family, whether it's this kind of thing where you're all together or not to miss your kids you know, spring recital yeah. or leave early for this or whatever. What I found is, you know, we had a ton of loyalty at over the years at various businesses because I always made a point. It's like, you need to go, go, you know, you can't miss that stuff. And, um, it, it just, you know, endeared those people to us even more. And I, I anecdotally, I would say I felt less pressure just to, you know, Hey, we got to pay more, got to pay more because we had this, this flex time you're paying in a different way yeah yeah we we do the same thing here uh and and it it turns out have had amazing loyalty as well right you know and it's i give my employees the same flexibility that i give myself like if they want to do this they know they are more than welcome to say hey i'm taking tomorrow i'm doing this but i'm like you know I'll, i'll 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 make sure that i get the work done and that's really what it is i i hate the idea, I almost said, I'll make up the time. You're not making up the time. You're getting the work done. That And that's yeah. that's another focus for us here is it's the, the way we are, the, the way our business runs. It's it's not like we need to punch clocks and, and log hours. It's we need to get the work done. And as, as long as we're getting the work done, everything's good. I mean, we, we do like to have some synchronicity in terms of when people are working, in terms of the hours that people are working, because there's. There's sort of those in the moment conversations that can happen uh, and and to communicate synchronously as opposed to asynchronously makes a lot of a lot of sense in a lot of cases, but not all the cases. And so, yeah, everybody's free to kind of work when they want to work as long as they get the work done. That's it. 
Yeah. And I think there's ways like we always had all kinds of uh, levels of employees from entry level and technicians and supervisors, managers, and, and it, the higher, or I don't want to use this hierarchical thing, but for, you know, managers and executives, it's that flexibility or, or freelancers, maybe it's flexibility is a little more, but th- we did, we did have hourly folks and you can make it work with them too. Um, you just, you, you, you have to, some people roll right into it and they just, Oh yeah, great. I'll, I'll deal with it. Flex time, this kind of stuff. And we actually built up, let them earn flex time. Um, you say, Hey, you're going to stay, you want to get some things done. We'll bank it in your flex thing. Now every state is different. A yep. lot of yep. people, uh, you know, they don't let you do that anymore, but, um, I, I loved it and I think they liked it a lot. So it's definitely something to, uh, to consider and to add to your benefits package when you're talking to people, especially when you're trying to hire people. Hey, can your business use additional cash flow right now to help it grow or just get through, you know, a temporary rough spot or something? If so, our friends and our sponsor at Business Capital Providers may just be able to help you with what you're looking for. They specialize in funding small and medium-sized businesses quickly and without lengthy paperwork or strict collateral requirements. You must be in business for one year and produce revenue of at least $25,000. So, okay, now we're rolling. It's quick. It's easy. It's a one-page application. You need six months of bank statements. Okay, well, if you've been in business for a year, that's easy. Fast results, no collateral required. When banks say no, business capital providers say yes. And to get started, you just go to bcproviders.com slash SBS to find out how you can get funded for as much as $250,000 in as little as 72 hours. So this is amazing. So go to bcproviders.com slash SBS, fill out the one page application, quick and easy, provide them your bank statements, and you can find out how you can get funded for as much as $250,000 in as little as 72 hours. And our thanks to business capital providers at bcproviders.com slash SBS for sponsoring this episode. You know, I'm a big fan of the show. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, which probably tells you a lot about me and maybe more than I cared to share. But uh, (laughs) I've become an even bigger fan of the podcast that they do, which is done by sort of the three principles, the three creators, co-creators of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Rob McElhinney, Charlie Day and Glenn Howerton. Uh, They get to they the the. They decided they wanted to do a podcast, I don't know, a year or two ago. And what they're doing is going back to the beginning of the entire series. I think they've got like 15 seasons now or something watching each episode. And then they discuss the episode. That's the framework of each episode of the podcast. Right. So you could, in theory, watch along with them and and hear their comments. And they share things that including like their thoughts on what they remember from making the episode but also, you know, looking back on it, especially the the older ones, you know, 10 plus years ago, where it's like, wow, I, I don't know that we would have made that decision now. We've learned so much. And and so yeah. you get this insight into their creative process and also learning just some fascinating things about the way television is produced. And and so but it's all just the three of these guys who are clearly very good friends and very comfortable with, with each other, just having a conversation. And it's off like they've gotten better at it. The first maybe six or eight episodes kind of sucked in terms of fl- flow because they didn't like they have flow on TV. They did not have flow in the, in the podcast studio, but they figured it out, you know, and uh, and it's fascinating because they've each done things beyond it's always sunny in Philadelphia. They, you know, um, Charlie Day's done a bunch of movies. Actually, all three of them have done or Glenn and Charlie have done a lot of movies. Uh, and then Rob McElhinney uh, has gone on to do, he's got that show on Apple TV plus mythic quest that, that, uh, that he created, I think. And I think Charlie Day was sort of behind the scenes part of that too, but they've all, mm. you know, had, had quite a bit of success. And, uh, and if you haven't watched mythic quest on Apple TV plus, if I highly also highly recommended, that's a fantastic show. But Rob said something very interesting on a recent episode that caught my ear. Now, now here's someone with massive success could have a massive ego. And at times I'm sure he, he does leverage his ego to move things forward. Right. But 
He is someone that is very aware of the talent of the people that he surrounds himself with. And, and one day he even said it explicitly. He said, oh, yeah, my the whole goal of my career is to latch on to someone who is better than me. And it's like, wow, that that takes so much self-awareness <laughs> to be able. Yeah, it's, it's, it's powerful. It's yeah. super powerful. And and he's right that, you know, I, I mean, I, I think about my own life when I've when I've let my ego get in the way, which is far more often than not. So just, you know, <laughs> I'm not good at this. But yes. when I when I have gotten it out of the way, I am far more successful than I am when I think I can be the one to just do it all. It's better when I do what I'm good at and let other people do the stuff they're good at. Yeah, that's, that's smart. It's also kind of that, you know, we've I've made that comment before here on the show that you're the average of the five people you hang around, hang around with the yeah. most. Right. And, you know, it is it, it, the question that comes to mind, though, when you like, especially somebody who's a massive success. How do you how do you uh, connect with that? You know, someone like that. How do you because it's kind of a mentoring thing, right? OK, I'm going to find a mentor that's you know, better than I am, however you define that. Sure. Um, and I think that, you know, there's all different ways to do it, even to the point where you have to pay people. You know, we had uh, Brian O'Connell on the show a few years ago, or a couple times, actually. And he joined this uh, roundtable of CEOs. Actually, we had the, found, the founder of that uh, yeah. person on the show, too. Yeah. Uh, and he talked about how you know, they were making him better, the, this group that he was paying to join. And they told him, you know, hey, it's time your business has grown so much, you need to hire a CFO. And he just couldn't get his head around it and giving up that control, all that kind of stuff. And they told him, well, don't come back if, if you don't hire a CFO. Yeah. Because you're wasting our time. And that got him to hire a CFO. And, and it made all the difference in his life. I know he's been, you know, very successful and business has grown tremendously. Um, so there's lots of different ways to do it, but uh, I guess the key is just to get out there. Even if you have to pay pay for it, you, you got to get involved in some groups, you know, ask your kind of unofficial advisors who you should meet, who you should talk to, whether it's your accountant, your attorney, uh, yeah. your banker, any anybody, uh, your business associates, if you're joining the Chamber of Commerce, in any sort of organization that you can then reach out to people that you think are doing better than you and, and learn from them. Yeah. I, you know, as I'm digging into this, I'm I've never had a problem accepting that, like, uh, you know, a, an expert like that, an, an attorney, uh, an accountant, th th those types of folks are, you know, a graphic designer even right are, are better than me at the things that I yeah. am, I am hiring them for. Really, where it comes where, where when I heard this, where it resonated for me was he did this with his business partners. Right. So anytime yeah. I'm entering into a business partnership, I feel like I need to show my value. Right. And the way that I do sure. that is by being the expert at as many things as I can possibly be an expert at. Right. Because I, I want to I want to prove my worth. I want to earn my place or at least show that why I have this this place. And what he was saying was exactly the opposite. It was just find the good people and let them do the work because they're better at the work I'm supposed to do than me. And, and that was the really interesting thing was saying, no, no, that's harder. Like, that's much harder. And, and that's and, and really when this resonated for me. Yeah. yeah. And it's often uncomfortable. It's massively uncomfortable. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm used to like being the leader or, or, you know, driving things. And, um, it is more uncomfortable when you have to, you know, work with people well maybe uncomfortable isn't the right word more challenging uh to to your own framework of how they how things work but yeah it, it is terrific advice yeah definitely yeah yeah so i yeah i heard that more i mean because he's done it with his business like that's what he was talking about was in the context of business yeah. partners yeah it's fascinating that's good it's good stuff you you made a comment uh or you know in our notes uh that we use here for the show and something about Oh, you need to always expect uh, your employees are going to talk with one another. And, and I'd love to um, dig into that, that, that concept. Um, it's not really, you know, keeping secrets, but things that you may not expect your employees to talk about, you can count on them talking about. And, you know, just 
Folks, if you're listening, we're, we're, we're kind of doing a grab bag of, of topics today, things that Dave and I are interested in, and hopefully you are as well. And I'd love to learn more about this, you know, that that statement and uh, kind of where it resonated with you. Well, it came up after we recorded episode 389, where we were talking about how to handle layoffs and, and that sort of thing. And I was thinking about when, uh, you know, a time when we had to do some layoffs internally here and... I brought it to the staff after, of course, after the fact, they didn't tell the staff that we were laying off other people first, you know, but uh, we had a conversation maybe a week later. I mean, I, I told them about it and then had a conversation a week later where I said, hey, look, I, you know, I want to make sure everybody knows that, you know, some of these decisions were made because of budgets, but they were made to make the company healthier. And, and so everybody that's here is accounted for on the, on the books and and is afforded on the books and is in the budget and all of that. And the feedback I got was fascinating because it was clear because they said so explicitly like okay, well this is good because we've all been talking and we wanted to make sure we saved our our each other's jobs and so they had all kinds of ideas if you know if if anyone else was going to need to be laid off how they wanted to be involved and it was just like wow, okay, huh, these people are going to talk when I'm not there. Like, yeah. like specifically when I'm not there. Like the water cooler is real even when they're not in the same office. Like if you've done your job and you've created a company culture where everybody is comfortable talking with one another about business stuff, which hopefully they are, then you must know, I don't even expect, simply know that they will be talking with each other about all kinds of things, some of it personal, some of it business that is not meant for your ears. And, and that's okay. Uh, in fact, it can be a good thing. Again, you set, you get to set the tone both by how you act and how you communicate with people, but also by the people that you keep and the people that you dismiss by, you know, yeah. so that your company hopefully has a healthy culture, but know that that culture is going to happen when you're there and when you're not there and perhaps especially when you're not there. So, uh, so yeah. So how do you tap into that? Where, like where you were you, you, this realization that they started, they were planning, you know, kind of without you what they would do and they knew what was going on. Cause you know, th th people are obviously you've hired them. So they're smart and they know what's going on yeah. and they have a sense of things. They, they see how the business is going and if things are, problematic or slowing down and they're expecting these, you know, changes. The, the challenge is how do you tap in for me that, how do you tap into that, uh, taking their advice without, I guess it's going to sound wrong, but g giving up control because ultimately you want to make the decisions, right? Yes. And, and it, I don't know that I have the magic answer to that. Uh, but it, I think I, well, I do, I'm just not a specific <laughs> one and it is communication, yeah. right? You know, I, for me, and this has happened a couple of times where I have taken a step back on my own, almost unintentionally, you know, I, I we have those moments, I call them my meditative moments, the, the driving moments, the shower moments, you know, the things where you're your mind is mostly unoccupied with thinking about something actively. So there's lots of, you know, percolation happening in the background. And it was in these moments that I realized, wait a minute, you know, the people that I have working here with us on the team, they are smart. That's why they're here. That's why I can tolerate them. Uh, you know, so yeah. obviously they're going to be aware of this and, oh my gosh, I need to have this conversation with the team they're not going to bring it up to you, right? They're not going to bring it up to me. They're going to bring it up to each other. So the only person that can bring it up while I'm in the room is me, or at least the most appropriate person. And so I, I will bring these things up. And by doing, I won't notice everything, right? But I'll notice the things that I notice, or I'll think about the things that I think about. For example, when, when COVID hit, right? The first, when lockdowns especially hit, the first thing I did was look at the books and decide how much, you know, well, how much runway do we have? If revenue stops today or pauses yeah. today, you know, I know it's going to resume at some point. I don't know when. OK, that that was all I knew. Right. And so it was like, how long can we keep everybody, uh, you know, on staff? Uh, how long can we keep, you know, making payroll here? 
And I, I knew the answer to that. And I was like, okay, cool. And then like two weeks later, it hit me probably in the shower or something like, oh, uh, wait a minute. I haven't told the staff that how comfortable I am with our ability to keep them employed. They know what's going on in the world. We actually talk about that every day, but we talk about it as a thing out there, not in here. We need to have that conversation in here. Right. So I brought it up and, and everybody was was they. They had been talking amongst themselves about how to protect the company and protect each other if the company was starting to hurt from this. But they didn't know what I knew. And so I shared with them what I knew, you you know, and everybody felt really good about it. But if you do that enough, then they will start to feel comfortable bringing those types of things up. And, you know, there you have to treat people with. Respect. I have this issue where I always thought that I needed to treat my employees the way I would want to be treated if I was an employee working for me. And I realized that sure. was, that was wrong because I I'm I consider myself patently unemployable. The people that work for me do not consider themselves that way. They don't think about things the same way. They don't want to know the same level of information all the time that I do. But there's times that they do. And so by by sharing those things that you believe, and, and again, I've had to learn this the hard way, not oversharing, not undersharing, but find, finding that balance and sharing those things that are relevant to them that you, that you can reasonably predict they are concerned about, then they will bring things up. And you can do it, in a, and they get, you can, if the culture is right, they can bring it up and you can say, okay, hey, and, and they can say, we have this concern and we have some solutions, right, whatever those might be. Fine. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Let me hear you out on that. Let me think about it and I'll let you know what we're going to do. Right. You, you, do you know, do it. Do you do it individually? You do it all together. Well, sometimes it comes up in the group. You don't get to control yeah. that. Uh, so you have yeah, to just, damn it. <laughs> I, but that's okay. But to see, that's yeah, the thing. You're right. Yeah. Is it's better yeah. sometimes in the end, it's uncomfortable in the moment because you yeah. are, you can, you as the, you know, the, the boss, the manager, the owner, whatever, you know, your role is can feel ganged up upon and, and in a sense you are, but you just have to approach it with confidence. Like, okay, thank you for bringing this to me. Let's talk about it. Let's spitball a lot of this stuff. I haven't made a decision on this yet. I got to figure out what's best for, for the company as a whole. There's some things, you know, I, I see things from a different vantage point. You probably hopefully don't even have to say that that's, that's implicit. It doesn't need to be explicit. Cause you don't want to sound dismissive, but there is that, sure. but you know, there is that assumption that you know, the buck stops with you. So you are the one that has to sort of take all this input in and, and go through it. And you might have to say, okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing this to me. Uh, I don't have an answer for this, but I will, I will have one within X number of days and take however many days you think it's going to take and add 50% to that. So that when you come back, in the amount of time you thought it was going to take for you to do this, you've beat their expectations, right? Scotty principle key. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I, I still have questions about, about handling this because uh, I don't think I've done a very good job, you know, at, uh, because I'm always kind of paranoid about control and, mm-hmm. and how you, how you frame things and how, you know, what the, uh, uh, the perception is of everybody. And even though I think, you know, we've created great cultures over time and people can be free to discuss it. It's a, it's a, that's a challenge. I, I'd love to continue the discussion, you know, with our listeners feedback at businessbrain.show. Tell us how, how you've done this, you know, if you have, and when your employees want to give input on, you know, if they see things, if, if, uh, you know, just how you handle it, I, I would really be interested, uh, in hearing more about it. It would, it would help me a lot. And I'm always, you know, I'm always the one that learns the most on this show. So I want to keep that going. Um, Along this, you know, communication with employees topic, you also had this idea that kind of uh, probably for the same reason, uh, got me a little itchy under the skin. This, this idea of a team accountability meeting of a, uh, which I, I love. It was kind of an airing of the grievances, a Festivus type of thing, if you are a Seinfeld fan. Um, let's talk more about that. What, what, how, how does that... Tell me how that works. How great would it be if you could get free coaching calls from successful creators every week? 
Experts give you actionable advice on how you can build a better content business, increase revenue, and establish yourself as an authority. And that's what you get with the How I Built It podcast by Joe Casabona. Previous guests have included John Warrillow, Wes Kao, Dickie Bush, and Alexis Grant. But that's not all. You'll also get live coaching calls where listeners get to pick Joe's brain on launching a course, monetizing their podcast, or improving their website. You can learn about How I Built It and subscribe at howibuilt.it or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks, Joe. All right. So this, yeah, this crazy idea about Festivus and team accountability. Festivus, me, Festivus employee meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I did have this idea and it, it's, it's a crazy idea and it's, I'm sure, uh, a terrible idea, but... I'm no, I, I wouldn't say that. Let, let, let me let me tell you if it's terrible. OK, <laughs> or <all right>. not. <laughs> so, you know, in, in most companies, the idea and, and this is a good thing. Uh, the idea is that everyone supports each other and is nice to one another and all of that. Um, and it helps you want to work with the team. Right. Every, you, you bring the things up. You say, oh, thank you for helping me with that. You did a great job with that. This, uh, you know, all of that. And that happens regularly. And I think that's important okay, yeah. that that happens regularly. And regularly is kind of the key here that, that led me down this crazy path. I think it's equally important not to gloss over the things, even the little things that cause stress and could be improved, right? Especially if those things are pre presented like productively and with consideration and attention and not just bursting out like, Okay, look, this has been going on way too long. The way you format your reports messes with me. We got to fix it, right? Those things have ha I know I've been in those scenarios before too, where it's mm -hmm. like you let it go because it, everybody has to have their own way of doing things and you let it go and you let it go. And then finally it's like, all right, screw this. I can't take it anymore. You know, this, this is not good. We got to fix this, right? And then boom, out it comes. So this is where my idea came from uh, about having a regular, but not too regular accountability meeting. Maybe this is a once per month thing. Maybe it's once every couple of months. I don't know where you have this airing of the grievances to take a nod to, from or give a nod to Festivus, but in a productive yeah. way, right? That way you, you are intentionally getting together to share the things that are on your mind. Uh, and everybody knows that this is happening now. I, I like, this is where I don't like, I don't know how you make it so that this feels productive, right? But the nice part about it is no one's guessing, am I doing something wrong? I, you know, I, um, I, this is, a, this is a, I, it, it, it worked out terribly, by the way, the example I'm about to give, uh, in my opinion, but I realized I went to see Sting a couple of weeks ago and, uh, Sting has always played with, like cream of the crop, a list, world class technician drummers. I like to play Sting's music. You've got to be one of the top drummers in the world, right? And he's always okay, had yeah. this, and it, it's great. I mean, he started with Stuart Copeland in the in the Police, and then he went through a couple of Zappa's drummers, Omar Hakim, who was with Weather Report, and Josh Freeze, and um, uh, he had Keith Carlock with him. But anyway, like these guys are all just like on a, on on pedestals together that separately and together. So I was like, wait, who, who's playing drums with him? And so I look and I, I see it's this guy named Zach Jones. I'm like, who the heck is that? And he's a no in, in comparison to the other names I just mentioned, he, he's a nobody. That's okay. I'm, I'm far more of a nobody than this guy. So no, no problem there. So I watched an interview with him where Someone was asking, he's been on the road with Sting. He, he recorded on his albums a couple of years ago, so he's known him for a while, And but he's been on the road with him basically all this year. And uh, he said, you know, the people were asking, the interviewer was asking him, hey, so like you're literally stepping into the shoes of giants. How do you approach this? He's like, well, I know that the way, you know, Vinnie Kalayuta plays something, uh, it was one of Zappa's drummers and was a Sting drummer for a very long time there's only one person that's going to play it like that. And it's Vinnie Kaliuta. And, and so I know that I have to approach these songs and play them my way. And, and you, you know, within reason uh, I'm given flexibility to do that. The vibe is, so there's sting and then there's uh, this guy, Dom, whose name I can't remember, which 
embarrasses me, but his guitar player who's been with him forever and is it sounds like his musical director, right? That sort of coordinates the band uh, for Sting. But he said, yeah, right. you know, and if Sting or Dom has an issue with it, they'll tell me. But in this band, no news is good news. You know, you do what you want. If nobody says anything, you know that what you're doing is okay. And I thought, well, okay, that's, I mean, that's cool. Great. Sure. Then I went to see him. It was awful. I, like it, everybody th- that I talked to that went and saw him, I was like, where were all the drum fills? Like, you can't play these police huh. songs without all the, like, flourishes and hi-hat stuff. I mean, that was, like, part of what made the police work was th- that craziness, you know, from the drum kit. And this guy didn't do any of that. He he basically played like he was a songwriter's drummer um, and with very few fills and anything. So it was th- that part of the – the show overall was fine, but that part of it was just bizarre. But th- that idea of no news is good news – I'm not sure yeah. it's a good idea. No, I think it's a terrible idea. Right? That, like, that is, is a terrible case idea. Case in yeah. point here, right? What we saw is they're not telling him anything. Well, why? Like, he assumes it's because they like what he's doing. I mean, maybe they do, but uh, it's very different yeah. from the way Sting has handled his career. And they've been changing the set list and taking out the more technical songs and letting those sort of drop off. So it's like, mm. aha, hmm, okay. So they're not, so, I'm not the only one that notices. So I think it would yeah. be good in that scenario for them to have a once monthly gathering where it's like, we're going to talk about all the, even just the little things that aren't worth bringing up, you know, in the middle of a show or even at the end of a show, but let's, you know, let's share notes. And this happens like in, uh, in theater, right? There, there is, when you're putting together like a, a, a musical, you, you know, everybody, you run the show, you get to the point where everybody has learned their lines. They've learned their blocking, you know, which is where they need to be on stage. The musicians have learned their parts and then you got to put it all together. And so you cram it all together and then uh, you run the show. And unless there's something terrible or dangerous, you don't hold the show at all. You just run it all the way through. As a, you know, the first one, you call it a stumble through. (laughs) And then hopefully it gets to a point where it's like a rehearsal and then a dress rehearsal. At the end of every one of those, though, the cast sits down and it's basically a one way conversation. And I'm not saying that that's how it needs to work in your business, but that's how it works in this business. It's a one way conversation and the director shares notes with everybody. And whatever the note is, you just say thank you. That's it. You know, and there is no... There's no conversation required. In fact, <laughs> there's a phrase that's that's offered when someone tries to have conversation. It's called take the note, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know. Uh, well, that, okay, so so let me let me stop right there. Yeah. yeah that yeah. where you have a, a central person, yes. in this case, like a, dire- a director or whoever, that I get and go, you know, hey, this is, I'm helping, t- I want to help improve whatever. This sure. is, you, you were speaking at an event. Here's your talking points of how to improve, you know, eye contact, whatever. Yeah, and yeah, the guys, yeah. they're the yeah. person says, thank you. That I get. And I understand, you know, me doing it, managers doing it. And we're even, uh, you know, just helping each other out, asking for critique that. But yeah. The, but see in a company, the, I want it to come both directions. I want it back yeah. at me just as much as it goes yeah. in the other direction. Yeah. So you, I think the way is uh, how you, how you frame it. To keep it productive and not turn it into a, a, a bitch session, you know, where, yeah. right? So maybe you have to just have some, uh, what I like, and, and I'm glad you you told the story in the theater part and how we got there, is I like there's some rules and it's everybody gets, okay, whatever, one comment, two comments, and the other person just, they can ask a question, maybe, maybe hey, could you uh, define that a little bit more for me or something, but you can't have a back and forth argument about it right right because that's not going to be you're just trying to say hey when you uh, give me that this report every week could you do it in this format because i have to reformat it every time or i i need the information by or you know if i'm sh- in the shipping department everything that needs to ship that day has to be out on the the racks by 2 p.m or 3 p.m whatever yeah, the time what, off, whatever you know, it is kind of thing. Yeah, yeah whatever it is no i like this idea uh, to, to borrow it from the theater world, that there is a, a rules of order for this yes. meeting, right? Like, I like that. That would make it work. Yeah, that's yeah. what it needs. Yeah. And that's what was missing yes. from my initial idea yeah. here was, yeah, it needs to not turn into, well, 
You might chaos. not like that about me, but let me tell you what I don't yes. like about you, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And it can't I, be personal. It's got to be. This is a professional statement. It's nothing about you personally. I think you're a great person, or whatever. Yeah. And everybody has to has to agree on those rules. Yes. Uh, when you go around the table, and it that I wonder, is. I wonder if you need an agenda. I think you. I think. Well, let me let me share this idea. Uh, you, you know because. In the way, one way of keeping it from becoming this, all right, well, now that you've brought that up, let me tell you what I have, you know, about my problem. I got a lot of problems with you people, right? Uh, is that everybody comes with a list and that list is immutable once the meeting begins, right? So you have your two or three things. Everybody has their two or three things. And yes. you're just going to go around and share them. And and maybe it's even take the note. If there needs yeah, yeah. to be a conversation after the fact, let there be a conversation the next day. Right. Like, you, you know, it can't, well, here's what I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm I, just spitballing here. But yeah, I, me too. Yeah. The other thing I think it needs is a moderator and it should be a different person each time. Oh. You you move the moderation around your team yeah so you say okay and i think you need to submit those your comments to the moderator that they can bring him to the meeting because they could look at that and, and go hey how about rephrasing this <laughs> you know maybe i don't know but but i think it would help to have a moderator to keep it you know productive and it's also really a great chance to learn as a, a you know, person that maybe has never been in that role before um you could, you know, they get a chance to be uh, a team leader in the meeting uh, and you go around. So I think we should really kind of block and tackle this out a little bit more and, and produce a one pager on, a, on what a Festivus employee meeting really entails <laughs> and, and how to and how to run it. And then I, yeah. I think we should put it up on the website and let people critique it and use it and see if um, we can create a, a new type of um meeting that could be really productive because we talk about how we're not huge fans of meetings because they kind of you know they, they can suck out a yeah. lot of the your time and the soul <laughs> out of your your day but uh this could be interesting and i, and I like the way it, it's it's kind of evolved here during this discussion about how to how to do it and i think it could be really productive because people do keep that stuff inside and if they felt that there was a, a venue where they could you know, critique and make suggestions to help improve one another. You know, iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. When you, when you are working together, button heads a little bit, you, you can help make each other better. Um, so let, let's do that. Let's hash out the details. And um, uh, I think, I think that's great. Uh, yeah. I like this. I, yeah, it's already gotten better just having this conversation. I, yes, I, but there's something to this. I, you know, I, I share yeah, this. I, I think so. Yeah. I shared this with the team. At, at backbeat because this um this idea brought forth another thought of mine and and it was just a question for my team and and so i told them i said i had this crazy idea i don't think it's 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 good yet i don't know if it's ever going to be good but the crazy idea was these festivist accountability meetings i, I don't want to do that yet you know or if ever yeah but thinking about that gave me this idea of one way feedback. And I asked my folks a question. I said, what am I not doing for you? What do you need for me? And yeah, that's a good way to start it. Right. And I, and I said, I, I prefaced it with what I said earlier here, but also by saying, I did not give you the opportunity to prepare anything. So I don't expect you to have an answer right now. I said, if you do, well, then that tells me this is a really good question to ask <laughs> because you've already been thinking about it. Right. And, and no one did. Yeah, have, yeah. Right. Right. Like if you've got something on the tip of your tongue, man, am uh -oh. I glad I asked? <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Right. Yeah. But also better to have asked than not to have asked, it, it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so I, like th nobody did, which I guess was a good thing. Uh, but it, you know, it opens that door of, I want to make sure I'm not getting in your way. And, and, and the conversation from there evolved from, you know, what figure out, if anything, what you need from me, what I'm not giving you, where I'm getting in your way. It, it went from there to, hey, look, if there's something that you're good at or you're interested in that is 
that you see as being something you could relate to your job or add to your job or replace a part of your job that you could do here to further the company's mission that you're not already doing, say that too. Because I, I mean, you know, we're a small company. I know most of the people who listen yep. run small companies. You want to leverage every talent that someone brings to the table. And if someone is seeing an opportunity, but not taking advantage of it because they don't feel comfortable, they, they don't feel like you've told them that that's okay. Well, you need to be able to, they need to be able to suggest it to you, you know? Um, right. So, yeah, I, I like the idea. I think it, it needs some refinement and some uh, like this part. If, if you're asking those questions, just be sure you, you remember that your employees have incredible memories. Mm -hmm. So your response will, will be, uh, you know, etched in stone. So think about it, how you respond and say, Oh, you know, don't be flippant and say, Oh, let's do this or whatever. Yeah, I can do it. You know, they're, they're going to remember that. So if it takes more consideration or you need more details before you can make a decision, be sure to get that. So, yeah, cause this stuff's important yep. to your employees. You, you may think, Oh, it's just a, a little suggestion or whatever, but your employee could have been thinking about that this for months oh, yeah. and not, felt comfortable coming to you and uh you know just face it if, if your name's on the paycheck or you're the founder or one of the you, you're intimidating to these people uh, at at some level and because you control their destiny uh, yeah. at least at your company so don't forget that aspect of it yeah and that that's that i mean you're right they may forget lots of other things but they will never forget what you committed to do for them so never no. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's good. That's, yeah. that's the accountability part of this here. So, yes. and, and I, I really, when I had this idea, honestly, it started with me. Like I know how to hold my people accountable. I mean, it, you know, I, like you said, I signed the checks. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. there's, there's this implied and even not implied. It's an explicit arrangement here. You do what I tell you. I pay you for that. Right. Correct. But yeah. I really want to make sure that they are getting what they want. And I know that I, I can be scatterbrained. I have all kinds of things I'm doing. And if I'm not giving you what you need or not giving you the attention to a certain thing and a timely fat, whatever that is, don't just say, well, it's my boss. I can't complain about. It. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. You can complain about me. It's fine. Like, let me know. We can fix it. It's all good. So, yeah. Yeah. That's good. I, I, I really enjoy these these uh, mixed topic shows. A lot Same. of stuff going on. We, we you know we've got more stuff to talk about. Some interesting stuff. Uh, come back next week. We've got a tip for you that's going to save you thousands of dollars on equipment for your business. Could be tens of thousands, maybe millions, maybe don't want to. That's you, right. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to miss it. And uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you check out Business Capital Providers at bcproviders.com slash SBS. Figure out how you can get funded for as much as 250 k And hey, do me a favor. Keep living that charmed life, would you? <laughs>